Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is your boy Hype Down, and today I am here to share my Legion Betas BG build. Now, guys, this build works very great. I've done a lot of BGs with it. I did a lot of damage with it, and um, I just really believe that this is the way and the build that you want to play. Um, of course, there's a lot of other builds that you can use, but I've tested them pretty much all of them. I've been on this beta for a few months now, and. Uh, when it comes to results, when it comes to um, what I've done for my team, seeing like what I'm doing alone by myself, hands down, I really believe that this is um, the best build to play with. So let's get right into this, guys. So right now, I like Ebon Fever, Epidemic, Clawing Shadows, Debilitating Infestation, Corpse Shield, Infected Claws, and Dark Arbiter. Now, row 75 and row 100, you can switch to Defile. Or spell eater depending on uh, what you want to do because in BGs your pet is going to be getting cleaved and you're not really able to heal it so I mean sometimes when you need that defensive and you don't notice that your your pet's dead it might fuck you over so I don't know but I still fuck with corpse shield anyway sometimes I just like I'll just hurt resummon it and pop corpse shield but I don't know you'll get used to it <laughs> um, in the file in Dark Arbiter, guys, the reason why I said either or is because for different maps, um, one of these moves are going to be better to have than others. Uh, maps such as like um, like Ida Storm, um, Arathi's Basin, um, pretty much any map where you have to go, I mean, Battle for Gilnez, when any map that you have to run to the battle and get a node for the starting um, fight. This thing really has the power to just one shot whatever. So if you have a team fight, you pick a healer, you pop Dark Arbiter on them, and you kill the healer, the fight will be wiped, and you get the node, and you get the upper hand in the team battle. But that's only if you use this the right way. Um, so that's why I think this will be strong on those type of maps. And also because if you guys split spawn people, they might wait. And by the time you get like the next battle or the, ba or the battle after the next one, you'll have this one back. So this is really strong. Um, and when this will come in handy, like capture the flag maps or like any map where like it's going to be a constant battle for a while until like things start going ham. Um, because this this is always going to be useful. It's on a 30 second cooldown. This takes over your um, death and decay. So pretty much with this move, guys, um, you just pretty much place it on whoever, whoever you see that's like not really doing too much moving. Place it on him and pretty much it's going to expand for two seconds if he notices it doesn't really matter because in the rbg everybody's going to stay in the same area so you're going to get your stacks no matter what 1500 mastery is awesome it's going to help out your ebb and fever it's going to help out your clawing shadows now it's going to help out your clawing shadows more than it's going to help out your score strike because your score strike does physical and shadow damage okay as you can see the score strike only does 31,000 shadow damage if you read the second number. Now with clawing shadows, this does straight out flat shadow damage. This is 71,000 shadow damage. So the mastery that you're going to get from the file is going to help you out a lot. That's why I said both of these are viable, but they're going to be viable in their own way. Um, this is going to be like um, a mixture between a rot build and you having that potential to just say yo hard switch to this guy right now and when you say hard switch it's really gonna be a hard switch because this shit has the potential to one shot anything it's really hard for anything to live through this thing so that's why um, I like running with this it's, it's just, it helps secure kills and if you have other team other people on your team who know how to play as well um, to, to help out your damage along with the rot that's going on with this single target damage is really awesome but if you want to play it safe, if you don't really care too much about having a strong ass arbiter, you want to just have some um, consistent overall damage to keep the healers healing and in dispelling, the files are going to be the way you want to play. Because you can get six defiles before you can get another um, dark arbiter. What I mean is, this is a three minute cooldown. This is a 30 second cooldown. So 30 seconds, 30 seconds is one minute. So 30 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute. 30 seconds, 30 seconds, two minutes. 30 seconds, 30 seconds, that's three minutes. So you get six defiles before, um, or you can get one Dark Arbiter. I don't know. It's it's, it's pretty much what you want to do, but they they both work, trust me. And um, yeah, so now now that I explained the row 100, I already explained the row 75, saying how like this will get cleaved and you can't heal it. Um, the reason why I choose Infected Claws 
is because I, I noticed how um, our wounds got buffed, our damage to our wounds got buffed a lot. So I want to have a chance, like some resource to to put wounds on a target. That way I can take advantage of that because I, sometimes I will go into the battle. Sometimes I might death grip something to me so I can fetch and strike it to put some wounds on the target. But um, if I'm going to play that range game, if I'm going to stay away from the whole fight, I want resources of wounds. So that's why I'm going to be having that. And Necrosis, it's a really good ability. Don't get me wrong. I like Necrosis. But having a chance to get some wounds that got tremendously buffed, I just can't pass that up. So that's my BG build, guys. You pretty much already know what everything else does. Like I said, this short Ebon Fever, just, I'll just break it down anyway for you. Ebon Fever is going to make your dots tick harder. You know what I'm saying? This is going to make, this makes your dots, okay, if you read that break, it's going, you see where it says um, at the bottom, var and Plague? You see how it says 10.5 seconds, right? Now when I take it off, look where it goes up to. That's 21 seconds. But as you notice, the damage doesn't change. It still says 126,000. So when I go back to Evan Fever, it's 126,000 still, yes, but it's going to do 126,000 damage in 10 seconds, not 21 seconds. So that means each tick is going to tick harder. So that's why Ebon Fever is so fucking great, guys. And um, like I said, in Epidemic, this is pretty much your, uh, your move. You can pop wherever you want. Like, I can pop it right now, actually. And you see how I'm getting Runic Power? You could pop this, and um, you only get three stacks of it. But you could pop this no matter where you are, and you get stacks of... Uh, and, I mean, and you get Runic Power. So this is really, really awesome to use in RBGs. It just adds some more resource to doing some damage when things are far away. Uh, again, this is making your score strike range, making it full shadow damage. So this is awesome. Makes you so you don't have to go into the fight. Debilitating infestation. This is going to slow the targets, guys. So you do not have to. Um, so you so you can catch them easier. So you don't have to always chain the ice targets. Uh, having the AOE slow with chill blings was a really good thing. And peeling for your um, your flag carrier in just overall slowing in RBGs is actually a good thing. Helps when people are trying to break out of the team fights. You can just outbreak and slow them the fuck down. So this is really, really awesome. The reason why I don't really say asphyxiate is because a lot of things at the moment have a lot of stuns. You know what I'm saying? Like you got warriors, you got demon hunters, you got rogues, you got pharaohs, you got holy paladins like monks everything has a stun so having a 45 second cooldown cc that um will only be dr'd anyway in my opinion just is not worth it so i don't know guys i that's why i don't really like asphyxiate right now now if it was a 30 second cooldown again i'd, I'd say that you know asphyxiate i don't really give a fuck about the yard range nerf but if it was more of a 30 second cooldown i'd say go with asphyxiate but like i said having an overall slow in a bg is always been a good thing um, so that's it. Now we're going to go to Honor Talents. Now this could be okay to use. I mean, this is your PvP trinket. Sorry, this is your PvP trinket pretty much, though. You guys choose whatever one you want. It doesn't really matter, but I just stick with the, the regular PvP trinket. Um, when it comes to hard, hard lines, reinforced armor, and sparring, my automatic go-to is going to be reinforced armor because I'm not really going to be in battle. So everything is pretty much going to be cleave and dot damage that's going to be hitting me. I'm not really going to be getting hit with any type of melee damage. So sparring is not really going to be helping me at all. So it's going to be either reinforced armor or again, a hardliness. Because, like I said, I'm going to be out of the combat. I'm not really going to be taking any damage at all. So with cleave damage being the only thing that's probably going to be hitting me, I'm going to take 20% less damage because I'm not getting hit by everything. So, I don't know. I might run with this sometimes or I might run with this sometimes. It just depends. But sparring is more for, like, dueling and more for um, arenas. All right? Now, I already explained this in another video. This is your biggest source of defense. You don't really notice it, but it's very, very helpful. It has a 20% chance out of any spell that comes to you. Not just one, any spell that comes to you to be absorbed and turned into a dot. The reason why this is awesome is because, let's just say, let's just for argument's sake, a 500k chaos bolt is about to hit you. Instead of it doing 500k direct damage, it does 500k over time. So this provides your healer with time to heal you. And again, if he comes up with another 300k um, chaos bolt or whatever the fuck you want to call it, um, it's going to, it could absorb it again. So this is really awesome. Uh, and just hands down something that I'm always going to choose over an offensive like Dark Sim 
or anti magic zone which is two minute cooldown fuck that this is like hands down the best it's a, it's a constant defense now necrotic or the reason why i choose necrotic orb is because it's a flat eight percent there's no ramp up like like decomposing aura and in a bg guys you're going to be moving around constantly you're not really going to be in 20, 10 yard range all your moves are going to be about 30 yards range um this one's a 100 yard range you know what i'm saying so 30 yard range you're not really going to be 10 yards but if I do get in 10 yards for the short period of time or where I'm going to be in 10 yards, I want to deal 8% more damage on my magical spells, okay? Which is my Ebon Fever that's taking harder, which is my Klong Shadows, which is straight up shadow damage now, which is um, Dark Arbiter that hits like a fucking truck, or Defile, which is going to give me 1,500% mastery to boost the damage of Ebon Fever and Epidemic. And outbreak and clawing shadows and stacking with necrotic aura so that's why I choose necrotic aura guys but you guys can play around whatever the hell you want I just love this pandemic again this changes what your outbreak does is make your outbreak deal damage and um, it's just a great ability you know what I'm saying it, it just it's, <laughs> it makes your outbreak a different move that's why I say um, outbreak is really awesome I don't give a fuck how good wandering plague is I don't give a fuck how good Crypt Fever is. Um, I notice that I use Outbreak quite often because things get dispelled or things are always together. And just having something like this just makes it so awesome. Like, if the whole team is together, this move does more than Epidemic. So if the whole team is together, I'd use Outbreak. But as they start getting too spread out, then you use Epidemic. So, I don't know. You just got to play around with it and you guys will see very, very soon. But I just really wanted to get another video out on the BG build to get you guys more comfortable because the pre-patch is about to drop. And for all my, my people, I'm sorry that um, my upload time was kind of weak this week. But um, I was real busy. As you can see, I got a little tan going on, you know what I'm saying? And I just was running, doing a lot of running around. Like I said, I got a full-time job. I got my own place. So I just... Is my time is sometimes limited, but I really do try to upload as much as I can. I try to balance my fun time with gaming and editing and my hobby. This is all my hobby shit, you know what I'm saying? So I'm doing my best to manage it, and I'm just really appreciative of your patience. So thank you guys. But don't forget, just because I'm not uploading, you can contact me at any given time. I mean, comment on the video if you need help. I'm always going to be here to, to answer any Q&A on here or on my Facebook fan page but when it comes to me uploading I just have to I just gotta find the time to do it sometimes when I have a busy week alright guys but as always thank you for watching thank you for your support like subscribe refer me to some friends and please continue to be a fantastic audience ah uh, you know what before I get out of here let me just show you how it works real quick how you wanna open up just so you guys can be more um, efficient with this so right away guys the first thing you want to do is pop your outbreak to get it on the targets okay get your dots on the targets so now we have our dots on the targets I got a proc so now I'm gonna pop the file and I'm gonna pop gargoyle oh, I don't have the file fuck me and I can't get it now son of a bitch alright you know what that was supposed to be gargoyle okay and I was supposed to be <laughs> guys that's so fucking fail fuck it guys I'm out of here like <laughs> as always guys thank you for watching Thank you for your support. Like, subscribe, refer me to some friends, and please continue to be a fantastic audience. Sorry about that. But again, guys, you would have popped the file. You would pop gargoyle. Use your outbreaks to get your dots on everything. And then death coil score strike. Death coil score strike. When you get in, you in the main thing you want to do, guys, is you want to pay attention to where you get the file back and um, use it any every time it's on cooldown. Because every time you do not use it, um, you're wasting the talent that you specced into, alright? Okay, guys, I'm doing that thing where I just keep talking. I just love you guys so much. And now, like I said, I'm really apologetic for not having those uploads for you. You figured dicks to the wigs me. So, alright, guys. <laughs> Peace.